Iron Man no more. The man of the moment, Elon Musk, is now bigger than Iron Man. He's the new Steve Jobs. But it's got many wondering if the magic can last. Let's bring in Scott Martin from United Advisor and Bruce Turkel from Turkel Brands. Matt McCall is back with us as well. Scott, what do you think? This is the other big story everybody was talking about from last night's news. Elon Musk, the man, the myth, the legend. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, the guy's a rock star, though, Melissa. And I think there's a couple things going on here. Um, one, he's, he's a visionary, he's a fire starter, no pun intended, and he's an inspirer. And, and meaning that is, he comes out with ideas. And I think, yes, it's a lot of boom bust type of things that go on with the companies that he starts. I mean, look at 08. Uh, Tesla was hemorrhaging money. It looked like it was going to shut down. He even admitted himself he thought it was going to fail. He was broke. Uh, but he comes to the he, right, he comes to the table. And by the way, speaking of broke, he put a lot of his own money into his ideas. I mean, that's what he does. He puts his money where his mouth is. And let's face it, Melissa, when it comes to the stocks, which is the other side of this thing, yeah. the stock market loves guys like this. You know, they love visionaries. They love guys that come out with crazy ideas because the fact that they, one of them might work, that makes okay. the stock go nuts. And that's what you're seeing with Tesla. But, Bruce, the danger with this, I mean, on one side, you have the guy who turned every little boy's dream into a reality, fast cars and rocket ships. But in America, we love to build up icons and then we love to tear them down. And that seems like that is the danger for people who are buying these stocks. What do you think? Well, of course, it's the difference, Melissa, between a celebrity CEO and an anonymous CEO. And with a celebrity, we all love him. But of course, at some point, you're right, we start to tear him down. Your Steve Jobs comparison was apt in a lot of ways. Most of all, the concept that you have that genius of Steve that we heard over and over and over. And then when Steve was no longer around, people worried about what would happen to Apple. But all they had to do was look at bench depth. They have Tim Cook, they have Johnny Ives, they have Rand Hill. I mean, they got a powerful group there. And it's the same at Tesla. Go on the website, look at the management page, look how deep that bench depth is. And the problem is nobody knows, nobody knows who's on now. the bench. All they know is Elon Musk. So as an investor, the average investor out there, they see Elon Musk. And yeah, okay. we like to you know, build people up and tear them back down. Uh, but I got to tell you, I, I'm like a, a little girl in a boy band with Elon Musk. I think he's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, okay. I, I, I own his stocks. I think he's great. On that note, I got to get to some breaking news right now. We have on GM. So GM CEO Mary, uh, Mary Barra is filing a written statement for the House Committee before her testimony on Tuesday. So we know a little bit about what she's going to say tomorrow. And these are the quotes we have so far. I can't tell you why it took years for a safety defect to be announced. I will tell you when I find out. I don't know what that was in response to. Today, GM will do the right thing is another thing that she's going to say. And my sincere apologies to everyone affected. I'm deeply sorry. Um, Bruce, I mean, from a branding perspective, what impact does this? And I, I know we're throwing you a curveball here because we're supposed to be talking about something else. But this is the breaking news that's coming right now. So we have the right people to talk about it. Bruce, I mean, from a branding point of view, what does she have to get out there and do tomorrow in order to make people feel better about GM? She's doing the right things. The first thing she needs to say is, we are sorry. We understand what happened. We're going to get to the bottom of it, and we're going to make good. And she's going to do that. And she has the huge advantage of only having been in this seat for two or three months. So it's not entirely laid at her lap. She has the opportunity to present real credibility, real sincerity, and a real solution. If she does that, yeah. It's very likely they can put that behind them. If she doesn't do that, they're in big, big trouble. Scott, I mean, the problem with this is that it's like quicksand. Every day we see a new headline that shows they knew sooner, they knew more, there's more that they could have done. I mean, it's coming down to a real trust issue where you feel like, I don't know if this is the company I want behind the car I'm driving to keep my family safe. As somebody who trades stock, I mean, would you get anywhere near GM right now? <laughs> no, I'd get near their competitors possibly because they're probably going to benefit because I think your point's right. I think that could hurt their sales, Melissa. The quote that she had there, I think, saying that, you know, it took years to find out, that's not good. I mean, that reminds me of, like, what happened with the retailers over the Christmas holiday season, right? You know, Target and all these other uh, companies found out, you know, earlier about the hacking and didn't tell anybody. Uh, the credibility thing, like, like Bruce mentioned, I mean, that's a big deal because that's where you lose a lot of your customers. Yeah. All right. We're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for rolling with the breaking news, you guys. We appreciate it. I know we threw you a curveball. <laughs> From the U.S. to every corner of the globe, money is flying around the world.